In this video, I'm going to talk about the steps I use to convert a project from Xcode 6 to Xcode 7. Now, specifically, the audience for this video are going to be users that have a WatchKit app, um, are using Swift and going to Swift 2, um, and or you have frameworks in your project. Um, as a brief preview of some of the things that can go wrong that I experienced, um, these are two of the more common ones. So when I would do things like try to launch the simulator, to test out my WatchKit app, um, either it wouldn't work at all or I'd get a weird error talking about launch services uh, error, etc. So hopefully this video is going to help out with that. So just dive right in. So step one is uh, let's open the current project in Xcode 6. And if we need to, we can re-download it from uh, this location right here. Now, if you're like me, when you saw the prompt come up in the App Store uh, that a new version of Xcode is available, I downloaded almost immediately because I knew I needed to update my app but um, I wanted to be able to run the old version of Xcode if needed, and so this allows us to do that. In order to do it, all you have to do is take that final download, copy it to your desktop, rename it something like Xcode-6, and then move to your apps folder. And when you do that then, you get to load something like this right here where I have version seven of Xcode, and then my legacy version right here. It's just nice to have like the ability to still open a project if things go horribly wrong, but hopefully they won't because you're watching this video. Okay, so step two then is save a copy of a project. Obviously, it's always good to have backups, but we're actually gonna need to have this uh, backup for later on, uh, just in case, again, something goes wrong. At this point, we're gonna run into our first optional step, which is if you have frameworks. So the basic idea is one of the other classes of errors that I ran into was uh, frameworks seem to get uh, duplicated or copied in the wrong way in my project file, and this led to all sorts of compiler errors. So basically, if you are using a framework and you have good documentation, and hopefully you do for how you installed that framework, um, you just want to delete everything from like your build phases um, uh, area so that your project file is completely clean and without any external references. So in my case then, and as an example, I use a library called sqlite.swift. It's a fantastic uh, SQL interface for Swift. Um, and it had three essential dependencies. So it had a target dependency. I simply selected that and deleted it. I had a, a, a binary link um, library, so I deleted that. And then finally I had a copy files and I just clicked that and deleted it. And so this made sure that my project file, again, didn't have any like external dependencies because that was certainly a problem the first couple times I tried this. Um, the other thing I want to do at this point then in step three is to take note of your app and any WatchKit bundle identifiers. So by bundle identifiers, if we click into the general tab right here, um, your actual application, uh, like your iOS app, and then your WatchKit extension and app will actually have uh, bundle identifiers. And they're all three of them different. Just go ahead and take note of those and write them down somewhere like I've done right here. We'll need them later. Okay, so finally then, save our project file. Um, we've already saved an entire copy of our project folder, but now we just need a copy of that original like Xcode 6 native project file. Again, we're gonna merge this with our uh, finished version in just a few steps. Okay, so finally then, for the uh, finishing up steps, um, I should say now that we get into our finishing up steps, uh, we're ready to start porting our actual project over. And so step four is open the project in Xcode and convert it to Swift 2 syntax. Um, if you're anything like me, this was a, a hell of a process. I had something like 250 compiler errors and, and hundreds of warnings. Um, just chew through those as needed and get to the point where you can uh, have a running application again. And by running, I mean you can compile it and view it in the simulator. Um, just as a quick note, when you do this, when you open an Xcode 6 project in Xcode 7 for the first time, or presumably from 7 to 8, it's going to ask you if you want to update project settings. And also because we're going to Swift 2, it's going to ask you if you want to update your Swift 2 code. It's okay to say yes to both of those for right now, though it is important to note that if you have an existing WatchKit app and you don't want to port it over to watchOS 2 just yet, this will destroy um, your WatchKit app. So be very, very careful with this setting again if you um, aren't wanting to do that. But again, we'll hopefully work through that in the next couple steps. But uh, I just want to kind of point that out. That's where a lot of my problems came from. Okay, so in step six then, when we're done fixing our Swift code, and of course that's easier said than done, it took me hours to do that, but we're gonna once again save a copy of our project folder, right? Backup's always good. Step seven, quit Xcode. Sorry, that's a short one, but it's important. Um, at least it was for me. And then step eight. So now we're gonna take that saved project file, like again, the one that I worked on in Xcode six, and we're gonna overwrite the project file 
in the version of the project folder that we've been working on. So in other words, Skipcast right here, my podcast app, this is where I actually had all the code that went through and got converted to Swift 2. Here's its project file, which had been native to Xcode 7. I'm now gonna take the Xcode 6 version of that project file and overwrite that. Uh, step nine, we're gonna reopen the project back in Xcode and it may ask you if it wants to run any conversion steps. I did not do that because the conversion steps are what was ruining everything. Again, particular, particularly my uh, watch kit app. And now we get to a few optional bits. So if we had removed any frameworks from the previous step, uh, let's just call this 2.1 right here, um, we're gonna re-add those references to our, our framework files. If we had a WatchKit app and you don't wanna convert it over to WatchOS 2, um, we're gonna to want to make sure that all of our bundle identifiers, both for our app and our WatchKit apps, have been put in. Now that's how we actually saved these values in the earlier steps. Um, this may not actually happen to you, it certainly did to me. For each one of my targets, my bundle identifier had been erased. And so when I took note of these guys right here, I just simply copy and pasted them to the main app, to the extension, and then to the WatchKit app, like so right here. And this uh, links everything back up. And then step 11 question mark, maybe there's a few other steps that you have to do, like uh, linking our libraries or, or frameworks. But in my case, that was it. Um, when I launched everything, it, it built fine, and I can now run in the simulators uh, both my WatchKit app and my uh, core application. So thank goodness for that. It took many hours to get there. It seems easy now that I've done it, uh, and hopefully this video makes it easy for you as well because a lot of work isn't fun when you're not actually getting coding done. So uh, any questions about this or anything else, I'd love you to check out Skipcast, my, my podcast player. Um, if you're into building web forms, we have another product called uh, Rackforms. Uh, it does professional uh, web forms. And just any other programming tasks or, or questions you may have, please leave them in the comments. I'd love to, uh, love to touch base. All right, thanks a lot. Take care.